Matt Speakman joins the Porsche GT3 Cup Challenge this weekend and brings with him an extraordinary story. Well, I was actually back in 1993. I was just signed a sponsorship deal to race in the, in the 600 Supersport Championship um, back in the old motorbike days. And unfortunately, went and picked up the race bike that day, put it in a mate's garage, went to work that night and got hit by a drunk driver on the way home from work. A young guy with a blood alcohol of 0.27 came over the crest of a hill on the wrong side of the road, no headlights on. Um, he had a head on and woke up in the gutter, paraplegic. About six weeks into it, I was getting really depressed about the whole situation and looked about three beds up and there was a young guy, a bit younger than me, that had broken his neck quite high and they were teaching him how to use an electric wheelchair with a blow tube. And at that instant, I thought to myself, wow, things could have been a hell of a lot worse. Screw everybody, I'm just going to start trying things and see what works and what doesn't. Being that I'd been at a national level with my motorbike career, I wanted to get back to a national level motorsport just to basically prove to myself that I was still me and I could still do all the, all the parts of my life that were important to me. So I chose Rally, um, got a little TA22 Celica and started competing in the New South Wales Championship in 98. Did quite well, got third in my class in the, in the last round after building up with a little three-speed automatic in the 1600 and then jumped straight into an Evo 3 Lancer for the Australian Rally Championship in 1999. I then contacted Porsche Driving School and instead of asking if I could join their series, I basically said I am joining the series, I need to um, get into one of your Porsche Driving School Cup cars to do a few laps with a couple of small driving aids and they put me in touch with Thomas Mazira. Um, instead of trying to explain to Thomas, which had tripped me up in the past because people couldn't quite comprehend what I was trying to explain to them, I put the car on the trailer when I was up in Harvey Bay, took it down to Queensland Raceway and actually got Thomas to come out and have a look at the car. He looked over the hand controls, thought it was a fantastic setup. Didn't think we could actually convert one of the, cup, one of the school cars, but put me in touch with Andy McElroy, who then got me a lease car for the day, and McElroy Racing got the ergonomics of the hand controls that I was using, re-engineered them, made some very good improvements into the accelerator and the braking system, developed the clutch system for me and adapted it all into a GT3 Cup car. Unfortunately, as you can see, the bonnet is very bare and Basically I've put everything on the line just to get to this stage this weekend. It's taken a lot of time and a lot of money and a lot of effort to develop the hand control system. Obviously leasing cars for test sessions and things like that has also put a big strain on the budget. I actually had to go to the bank and get a, um, a reasonable sized loan just to compete this weekend. So we're very much dependent on sponsorship now to actually continue on and do the next the next five rounds in the series. And Matt's incredible story gives us all lessons that we can take in living life. Just get out there and do what I did, just start trying things. Put in the effort, start trying, start believing in your dreams, go after your goals, set a goal setting ladder to get there and absolutely anything in life is possible.